It's a given. Police officers are tough. And that they're prepared to use their strength when needed. That's their job, right? But what happens when officers are too tough? What happens when they cross the thin blue line? In this joint investigation by 60 Minutes and The Age newspaper, reporter Nick McKenzie reveals extraordinary cases where Australians claim they've encountered police at their very worst. These victims have suffered life-changing physical injuries as a result, but even more worrying, they've been confronted by a flawed complaint system and a police culture where covering up seems more important than the truth. I wake up pretty much every morning with a constant reminder. Nick Demopoulos used to have a fully functioning right arm. It's like waking up from a nightmare, then just realising, oh, this is actually real. Then one night, five months ago, he had a run-in with intruders. But not just any intruders. The men who busted into his flat were Victorian police officers. There was a struggle, and Nick's shoulder was torn clean from its socket. His bones shattered, changing his life forever. His crime? Well, there wasn't one. The police stormed the wrong house and arrested the wrong man. I could feel that my arm was flipped around. Your arm was not it where was it was meant to be? Yeah. And I just can't help but thinking that how, how this happened. I told you, if you score again, you're going to be placed under... You're under arrest. What for? The swearing. Oh, my God! To properly do their job, police are given special powers, including the right to use force. But when police go too far, just like anyone else, they need to be held to account. They handcuffed me and dropped me onto the ground. Someone broke my neck. A joint investigation by 60 Minutes and The Age has revealed shocking incidents where police have crossed a dangerous line. The most serious cases we've found are here in Victoria. And to make matters worse, the police watchdog here lacks the powers and resources to properly confront bad behaviour. It's a problem even police bosses want fixed. If Victoria Police loses the trust and confidence of the Victorian community, um, we're in a really bad place in our state. But our politicians are refusing to act. Um, I don't accept your contention. Nick Demopoulos is certainly not the sort of person you'd expect to have a violent confrontation with police. The thought never crossed his mind either, as he went to sleep at the flat above his friend's bookshop on the night of May 11. Outside, a manhunt was underway, and police, searching for an armed defender, mistakenly believed their suspect had entered the store. The police came in here through the garage. They jimmied up the garage door. They came through here. Mm -hmm. One group went straight ahead to our front door, mm -hmm. while the others came up the stairs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Crusader Hillis and Roland Thompson are Nick's flatmates and the owners of the Hares and Hyenas bookshop. The first thing I can remember is torches in my face and a lot of noise. Fearing a home invasion and with no idea it was police who barged inside, both Crusader and Roland froze in fear. How were you feeling when you saw these men and heard their voices? I thought that the they were coming to bash us. Nick's reaction was to run. What were you scared of? Intruders. I mean, that's clearly what, um, to me, who they were. When I was running down steps, it was literally for my life. As Nick tried to escape, he was grabbed from behind by officers and, still struggling, forced into the gutter and restrained. Do you ever remember seeing a police officer, a moment on their face when they realise, geez, we've got the wrong guy. No, no. Even when they decided to bring Nick in from outside, they lifted him from his arms from the back. So they were dragging on what were broken arms and picking him up. Hey, Nick. 
Nick's now had two major surgeries to attempt to restore some movement to his right arm. Let's see your movement. The first time's always a bit harder. Yeah. Excellent. That's good, yeah, yeah. Oh, good, good, good. But the bad news is the damage could be permanent. Have you ever seen the X-ray of your injury? No, no, I can't. You can't. Why yeah. can't you look at that? Uh, it, it, I, I just, um, it's too horrific. Well, that picture there pretty much tells you the extent of his injury. Um, Orthopaedic surgeon Dr. Sushil Pant says Nick's injury is one of the worst shoulder fractures he's ever seen. That's the shoulder blade here. Mm. And that's the socket. Mm -hmm. And you can see the ball's down in the armpit almost. Yeah, and this, this fracture's yeah, in a lot of pieces. Yeah. Um, Strange as it might sound, though, Nick is one of the lucky ones. Lucky because within hours of the attack, his case hit the headlines. After he was mistaken for a criminal. The full use of his arm after he was seriously injured by police in a shocking case of mistaken... It identity. embarrassed police into saying sorry. Uh, police stuffed this one up. And more importantly, it got Victoria's anti-corruption watchdog IBAC investigating the case. I don't have faith in the police to investigate themselves. I think there's an inherent bias with anyone investigating themselves and the police are no exception to that. Nick's lawyer, Jeremy King, was relieved when IBAC took over Nick's investigation because he's never trusted the police complaint system. The system um, is broken and needs to be fixed. I imagine some police would say, hang on, we're doing a tough job and here you are, an ambulance chasing lawyer trying to make a buck. Uh, I think it's all about checks and balances, to be honest. Police have a significant amount of power and they use that power on a daily basis. And if they um, use that power in a way that is excessive or unreasonable, they need to be held account. There are few incidents more shocking than the case of Melbourne disability pensioner John Gotsoulis. This ugly incident happened in September 2017. John hadn't done anything wrong. Instead, police were asked to do a welfare check because his psychologist wanted to make sure he was OK. But when police arrived, CCTV footage shows him being capsicum sprayed, dragged from his home, beaten and then hosed off on his front lawn. Nick, Even today, to it's him. still clear the alleged assault on John has taken its toll. When you watched that film back of yourself... I can't. I can't think. It's pretty humiliating, wasn't it? Very humiliating. Um, the fear of dying, you know, choking. Um, yeah, but the humiliation was the worst. What makes John's story so terrible is not a single police officer reported what happened that day. One of the cops actually filmed John's humiliation on his phone, but no one would have known about it if John wasn't also filming. His security cameras captured every dreadful moment. Would John have stood a chance in terms of making an effective complaint if not for his CCTV cameras? A bloke like John doesn't have a hope in hell in that situation uh, and I think the only reason why uh, he was successful in having someone look at it was because there was CCTV. Three of the officers have now been charged over the alleged assault and are awaiting trial. This kind of behaviour has to stop here, Nick. Yeah. No one deserves to be treated like that. No, no human being. Whether he's a, he's a convicted criminal, you put the cuffs on and that's it. That's it, you know, that stops there. Coming up... I'd like to know why. The man who played his music too loud... I spent 40 days in ICU. And ended up a quadriplegic. And now I'm here learning how to contain my own mucus. Just doing their job... I would have expected to end up in the cells. That officer's had probably, you know, one second to consider what their actions are. Or did police go too far? What do you think was going on when that officer called you? I think just cover up. That's next on 60 Minutes. I spent 40 days in ICU, basically learning to breathe again. And now I'm here learning how to contain my own mucus. This is just bullshit, man. This is just rubbish. It's November 2017. Right. 
and 48-year-old Chris Caradaglis has woken up in hospital, a quadriplegic. Come out, act like that. Okay. But it wasn't a car accident or a sporting injury that put him here. It was police. His crime? His stereo was turned up too loud. They handcuffed me and dropped me onto the ground and somewhere between there and dragging me towards their, their divvy van or whatever it was, someone broke my neck. That someone is alleged to be one of three Victoria police officers who knocked on Chris's door after a neighbour made a noise complaint. Chris admits he'd been drinking and when officers arrived, he at first turned down his stereo. But as they returned to their car, he turned the volume back up. I would have expected to end up in the cells. I, I, I was being really quite belligerent. You're belligerent because you'd turned the stereo up when the police had gone back to the car? Yep, yep. Um, I just remember being dragged out of my flat um, and being dragged al along the lawn and being put in a headlock and having my neck snapped. How did you know your neck had been broken? Uh, it, it just went limp. It's a weird feeling. Everything just got disconnected. Uh, and there was, a, there was a loud click and that's it. And, 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 from then, and from then on, I haven't felt anything. Chris now needs 24-7 support from full-time carers and his family, including his sister, Alex. As far as my sister's concerned, she's been handed back a, a, a brother with a broken neck and been said, you know, look after this. Have the police said sorry to your family? No. I haven't heard anything. It's nearly two years. Alex claims local police attempted a cover-up immediately after the incident. She says a senior colleague of one of the officers who arrested Chris called her, claiming police had done nothing wrong. And then he proceeded to tell me that the three officers that were attending um, all gave a statement and they didn't have time to corroborate, um, but their statements matched. So I thought that was pretty good. What do you think was going on when that officer called you? I think he was trying to cover up that this is, you know, this has happened and it's not our fault. Look elsewhere. How is it that police can attend to a Victorian's home over a sound complaint, a stereo up too loud, and that person end up a quadriplegic? Well, Nick, I, I, that matter's still being investigated, so I, I won't go into the specifics. I would say, though, to the, to the community that it's, it's, it's never in Victoria Police's intent or that somebody should get harmed or hurt as a result of an interaction with police. Let alone become a, a quadriplegic? A absolutely. Has the Victoria Police said sorry to the family? Um, well, I haven't. Nick. No, I've never met the family, but my investigators will work with them. Do you think it's important Victoria Police acknowledges...? Well, I think I am here today, to be fair. ..is actually investigated... Assistant Owen. Commissioner Russell Barrett is a respected cop who's in charge of the Victoria Police Complaints Unit. When you investigate, um, a complaint, ultimately, you're investigating for me. He so says he wants his officers to own their mistakes, even if it means calling out a mate. Do you see an in instinctive tendency of police sometimes to cover up for their mates? I'm not naive to say it doesn't occur, and it's something that I investigate from time to time. What goes through that person's head when they decide not to speak up about the misconduct of a colleague? Well, that's hard for me to, to, to say, Nick. Um, I, I would say, you know, policing is a, is a, is a difficult job. It's a complex job. Um, and that officer's had probably, you know, one second to consider what their actions are. Victoria's anti-corruption watchdog, IBAC, has now taken over Chris's investigation. Lawyer Jeremy King says the initial mishandling of the complaint, with police trying to keep it in-house, shows exactly why external oversight is so critical. This is the photo of the blood on the fridge. But it's rare for IBAC to no, get involved. Even, it simply uh, doesn't have the resources needed. But it's also horrifying how much of your blood was on the floor. In another um, disturbing case, Ethan Cruz was forced to take legal action after police dismissed his complaint that they'd bashed him. Well, we made several complaints and 
nothing ever happened. We had to wait four years for something to happen, so... Ethan was 19 when police unlawfully arrested him during an anti-terror raid in 2015. He'd committed no crime himself. Officers targeted him because he was high school friends with members of a Melbourne extremist cell. I got on the floor, put my hands up. They tied, they tied my hands behind my back. And that's when the beating started. Didn't start till after I got cuffed. And it, went, it felt like it went forever. Two months ago, a Victorian Supreme Court judge ruled police not only assaulted Ethan, but then colluded to cover it up. This police email we've obtained proves it. After Ethan complained about his treatment, the officers who raided him were told to prepare draft statements to be compared and validated to ensure consistency in their stories before the statements were finalised and sent to Internal Affairs. The Supreme Court judge made some pretty savage findings about the police. Uh, she found um, that they had effectively uh, manufactured evidence, um, that they had exchanged all of their statements with each other, and in response to all of that, um, she found them to not be truthful and referred them to IBAC. The judge awarded Ethan $400,000 in damages and also sent the case to IBAC to investigate what police were unable or unwilling to do themselves. It is appropriate at times for IBAC to, to manage an investigation in Victoria Police not to. Is an IBAC with more resources and better powers good news for the Victoria Police? Well, well I think there are some things that that might aid IBAC's ability to investigate. There's no doubt. Their job's an incredibly important one for the Victorian community and for Victoria Police. A stronger IBAC means a stronger Victoria Police? Well, I think a, a, a better community, to be fair. The cases of Nick, John, Chris and Ethan all underline a simple fact. Police can't always investigate complaints made against themselves. In Victoria, the best place to go is the anti-corruption watchdog IBAC but it desperately needs more powers and more resources. But that need is being ignored by Victoria's Premier. Daniel Andrews is refusing pleas from senior police and even one of his own ministers to empower IBAC. And while he does nothing, he hurts Victorians and the vast majority of good police. Premier, Nick McKenzie from 60 Minutes. The police have told us that IBAC needs to have its powers and resources fixed. Will you listen to the police? Uh, well, I'm not aware what conversations you've had with the Victoria Police, but the government's position is very clear. Uh, IBAC is a strong body that has the powers and resources it needs. Uh, no, um, I don't accept your contention that IBAC is limited in the work that it does. Chris Caradaglis pays little attention to politics. He's too busy surviving. What's your experience of Victoria's police oversight system? Well, this is it. I mean, we haven't had any experience. And there's been no scrutiny that we can see yet. It's been a really long time. No one has checked in to see how Chris is, um, where it's at. His run-in with police has utterly devastated his life. But if nothing else, his story might lead to better outcomes for others and help stop a culture where this sort of behaviour is acceptable or covered up. If you could speak to those officers who were there on the night, what would you tell them? I'd like to know why. I'd, I'd like to know what could possibly justify this. I'm not exactly telling the police how to do their job, but this ain't it. This isn't the way. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.